My Sims 4 Legacy Challenge has been out now for a year. A year. 365 days, a whole trip around the sun, and so much has happened. I did not actually mean for it to be this chaotic, but here we are. This is my first Sims 4 Legacy Challenge ever, and I'm so happy that I've been able to share it with you guys and we can all watch the chaos unfold together. We started off this Legacy Challenge with my founder, Alexis Ketter turned Volkov. She was a young adult parading around San Machino looking for any daddy to give her money or woohoo. Fast forward a year later and she is a married woman to Christopher Volkov of Moonwood Mill, who is also a werewolf, has turned into werewolf, and has had six kids with this man. Ezra, Autumn, Nicole, Edward, Clint, and ribonucleotides. She has done a complete 180 since her San Maishino Ho days. But at her core, underneath the mother of six, housewife, intense werewolf that she is now, she is still our hoe bag that we met in San Maishino. And I feel like this would be a great time to go over everything chaotic that has happened in not only her era of the Legacy Challenge, but also her daughters and our heirs. Autumn Volkov's Turnkey Aloha's era. A few weeks back on Twitter, I asked you guys to respond with what you believe to be the most chaotic moment of my legacy challenge so far and what your favorite moment was. And I said that if I got 50 replies to that tweet, that I would make a video dedicated to what I believe are the top 10 most chaotic moments. And here we are. Today, I'm going to tell you guys what I think are the top 10 most chaotic moments in my Sims 4 legacy challenge so far. Some of these you guys did respond with, some of these I didn't hear anybody talk about, so I'm excited to share them. So before we get into to it make sure you guys like share and subscribe and comment down below again what you think is the most chaotic moment what your favorite moment is and what you think i'm going to say now it wouldn't be a true solita sims video if i didn't f something up in the middle of making this video i forgot to mention as i was recording this if you stick around to the end there's a little surprise there's a little surprise if you stick around to the end that has to do with autumn and shanna so i recommend watching the whole video through okay bye the 10th most chaotic moment in the legacy challenge in my opinion i haven't seen anybody talk about this one but i believe it is when alexis and chris both had stds during their entire relationship and they didn't find out until 39 episodes in so in episode 38 chris is feeling a little bit funny He's feeling a little funny downstairs, you know what I'm saying? So he goes to the doctor and he finds out that he has a yeast infection, gonorrhea, and this third STD that I literally cannot pronounce and I'm not going to try because I'm going to butcher it. And he hadn't known about it for 38 episodes. That's insane. So the next episode in episode 39, he tells Alexis and Alexis and goes and gets herself tested and she finds out she has these same exact STDs that Chris has. And that to me blew my mind because I hadn't received any moodlet. And the fact that they've just both been carrying something for that long, I'm telling you, 39 episodes, okay? They started banging in like episode seven, I think, all the way to episode 39, that's 32 episodes. You know how long 32 episodes is in Sims time? Ezra and Autumn weren't even born and by then they were teenagers. That's like 17 years in real life. Imagine going 17 years without knowing that you have two STDs, that is insane. But luckily they got treated, they got over it and everything has been smooth sailing since. Number nine, the ninth most chaotic thing to occur in my Sims 4 Legacy Challenge is Leah's silver sweater stalking Edward and sleeping with Ezra to get to Edward. If you were paying really close attention to my Legacy episodes, then you would have known that during the course of Edward's teen years, he was constantly getting texts from girls asking to go out with him, which is still mind boggling in itself. Why anyone would be attracted to Edward out of all my Sims is beyond me, but the game just, it does its thing and I let it. And he had two Two girls texting him constantly and one of those girls was Leah's silver sweater. When I saw Leah walk into that club when Ezra was there I knew an opportunity has stricken me and he also found her attractive so that was working more in my favor and I was like what can I do with this? Number eight is another one that I haven't seen anybody talk about but it is when Rory punched Alexis the first day meeting her and while Alexis was pregnant. Of course we didn't know Alexis was pregnant right until around the punch happened and I doubt Rory did either but the fact is she punched Alexis, who was literally about to be her stepmother. Alexis did nothing wrong. She was trying to bond with Rory all night, but Rory just wanted nothing to do with her. I don't understand why she just hated Alexis off the bat, but that's Rory. You can't understand them. <laughs> I don't know, ever since then I just haven't really liked Rory Oglo. Cause you're telling me you're gonna fuck with my sim? My founder? Uh-uh. Number seven, a lot of people brought up this one. When the bag of bones that Alexis was banging at the very beginning of the series, Ty Lum, gave her crab lice. Yeah. 
I have to admit, that was insane because you're telling me this man gets bitches. I guess it makes sense because he is the descendant of the founding family of Copperdale, so therefore he probably does have some money in the bank, you know what I'm saying? I really do wonder what type of life this man had before he passed. Was he for the streets? Was he married? We'll never know. We'll never know Ty Lum's lore, and that kills me. But he must have been a ladies' man. He must have had some sugar babies, because how else would have Alexis gotten crab lice? Number six. <laughs> this one. I still can't believe this happened. Edward knocking up Hillary after banging her just once. Just once. Of course this would happen to Edward. He is the disappointment of the family. So it's only fair that the disappointment does something disappointing and gets his girlfriend knocked up after the first time of woohooing with her. It makes perfect sense and it was just beautifully done. I could not have asked for a better event to occur and I couldn't have asked for a better way to get rid of Edward. This way was perfect because before this happened, I really had no plans for Edward. I was just kind of going with the flow, seeing what would happen and whatever happened, happened. I will never not love it. I will never not love the fact that he lived up to his disappointing title. And even though Nina is a mistake, I have to admit, Edward is the perfect sim for this type of mistake to occur to because he actually is a really good dad. I know, crazy. I'm saying something positive about Edward Volkov. He's a very good father to his kids. And he's an amazing husband. So even though this was a bad situation, he made the best out of it. And I can respect that about him. All right, we're halfway through the list. Here is my fifth most chaotic thing to ever occur in my legacy series. And that was Alexis and Chris fighting the first time that they ever met. Christopher has been around since episode one, y'all. Episode one, he's been here since the very beginning. Alexis was on the hunt for daddies. That's when she met Roy D. Dillon. Then she went on a blind date and she got paired with Christopher. I had no idea who Christopher was. I think that's when the werewolf pack was just a few months old and I really hadn't explored it yet. I wanted to wait until the legacy to explore it. So when she got paired with him, I had no idea who he was. I hadn't been paying that much attention <laughs> when the pack trailer was released. I knew nothing about his traits, his age, his family, where he lived, that he was a werewolf, none of that. Basically what I'm saying is I had no idea how chaotic it could possibly be if she were to get married to this man. And what? <laughs> Look at it. Look at what's happened. Alexis was a raging bitch back in the day. She really was because she didn't even give this man a chance at first. He was being nice, cordial, chivalrous. He was making jokes with her, trying to have a good time with her, and she just wanted to be a mega bitch to him. So much to the point where they ended up physically fighting each other, and that's when she learned. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. You fuck around, you find out. Because she found out that he is in fact a werewolf and she got her ass beat. Though I do wish something that would have just like been the cherry on top of that whole situation. I wish she got the cursed bite from that and that's how she became a werewolf. I could have done so much with that storyline. I could have been like, oh she's confused and doesn't know what she's supposed to do now or how she got this curse. She's gonna go find Christopher Volkov and ask for his forgiveness and he could help train her and then they fall in love like that would have been so cute but the universe the sim universe had other plans and i mean still it was a great outcome enemies to lovers i know you guys are a sucker for that i personally do not see the hype with enemies to lovers that's just me i don't care much for that trope but i know you guys do because you talk about it non-stop but their introduction was very much insane especially looking at where they are now number four is by far by far and i mean by far my favorite plot twist to ever happen in this series and that is when ravioli ravioli give me the formioli found out that her soulmate zayden kivo is shan's brother <laughs> so i knew who zayden was before for him and Rumpelstiltskin fell in love, okay? I knew who he was because I had done a makeover on Shanna's entire family. Once that storyline where Autumn was falling in love with Shanna happened, that's when I knew I need to do something about her family. I need to make them over. Akira was about to be dust and I loathe Akira, so I didn't touch him at all, but I did give a makeover to everybody else in her family, which was her mother, Lanwola, and her three brothers, Zayden, Dexter, and Waldemar. The moment Rain Rain Go Away walked into school for the first day of high school and she was in her classroom with Zayden, and Kibo, I knew exactly who he was, but no, I did not expect for her to fall in love with him and it was love at first sight. I did not expect that. And when that happened, oh my God, this was like the sim gods putting something into my hands and saying, do your very worst. Cause how much more chaotic can it get? That realizing that your soulmate is the brother of your sister's fiance, that's insane. I took full advantage of that. And I feel like I did a great job when it came to the reveal. <laughs>
We're getting to our top three. Top three, okay? Number three, I think this one is very obvious. The lodging episodes in Granite Falls. There's so much that goes on in these episodes that they would take up the whole list. So I decided I'm just gonna group it in as a whole and count it as one topic because my God. Episode 65 through 69 is some of my proudest work. I am so proud of these episodes, you have no idea. And I think about them all the time. I mean, I hit every mark. I hit Mason being in love with Ezra and I had Autumn liking Shanna and the fact that they're all going to be in this little house, this cozy little house up in the woods. And what do people like to do in cozy little houses up in the woods during winter? They like to f and they're all on drugs. And then we have Ezra and Mason and how Mason has been keeping his feelings about Ezra inside for a really long time and he confesses them and they bang in a tent. But then Autumn airs everybody out and everybody's business is open for the world to see and it all implodes or wait, that's the thing the billionaires did. It all explodes and everybody's faces and everybody gets ruined and it's just a whole mess. It was so so messy and chaotic and I love those episodes and I cherish them with all my heart specifically episode 69 where everything bad happens those episodes changed the course of every single one that's when Autumn's business got aired out as an addict and that's when she had to go and get sober and her and Shanna actually began their life together that's when Addison got fucking dumped that's when Ezra and Mason's friendship ended before it finally rekindled and now they're living together in San Mishuno a lot happened a lot happened and those episodes in my opinion will always be some of my faves Number two, I was debating at putting this at number one, but I feel like number one is more chaotic than this one, which might be surprising to a few of you. But number two, the second most chaotic thing to happen in my legacy series, in my opinion, is Alexis murdering the entire Beerson family. <laughs> Another episode I am extremely proud of. Episode 40, I wanted it to be a different style than most of my episodes, which it is. It's different music, it's different dialogue, and I wanted you to know the second that you began watching yet that something was very different about this episode. And I also wanted to trick you into thinking that Alexis was actually going to be a good person and not murder an entire family, and I managed to do that to some of you, so also pat myself on the back for that one. Here's the thing about Alexis. She can make the smallest thing so insanely dramatic. Because did Bjorn and his whole family deserve to get murdered? No, but it's Alexis we're talking about. So in her mind, yes. You played with her heart. You didn't flirt back with her. Oh yeah, that's enough. That's all we need <laughs> to justify murdering his entire family. I needed to reinstate the fact too that Alexis has the evil trait. I feel like that's something we all forget. In fact, that's something I tend to forget is that Alexis is evil. She is not a good person. So I wanted to make sure to do something that would really set it into people's minds that she is not the one. And I thought, what better way to do that than by murdering an entire family for no freaking reason? I needed a good way to do it because I wasn't gonna do like, oh, she just hacksaws everybody or she shoots everybody. That's boring. I need to do something that you're not going to expect, and that was poisoning the pie. And not to mention that episode, that is when Clint became a Volkov member. <laughs> People are always asking, is Clint ever gonna find out about that? You're just gonna have to wait and see. Hmm, I don't know. I think Clint is a little too busy being emo right now, so I don't think he's really concerned about what happened to his biological parents. We have finally made it to number one, what I believe to be the most chaotic thing that has ever happened in my legacy series. But before we continue, I want you to comment down below what you think I'm gonna guess, what you feel like the most chaotic moment was, and what's your favorite thing to ever occur in the series. All right, are you ready for number one? Well, you're gonna have to wait, because I'm actually gonna give you another one. <laughs> I'm gonna add a number 11. So this is like the least chaotic thing to ever happen, but I just feel like it is some way chaotic and that is Ezra becoming hot. What? If you were to tell me a year ago that Ezra would become hot and then I would be physically attracted to him, I would have told you that you were straight up lying to me. There is no way. There is no way I would ever find that man attractive and oh. I was so incredibly wrong. And who would have thought it would have been just a little bit of black hair dye and a little working out? I don't feel like any of us expected that. You know, there are some people that stuck around since the beginning and they rooted for Ezra and they rode for Ezra and they were like, Ezra's hot, you have strength. I could never. Now though, I will shamelessly say the most disgusting things about Ezra and do it with pride. The number one most chaotic thing to happen in my legacy series, in my opinion, is Roy D. Dillon dying. <laughs> 
after arguing with Chris about Alexis. Why did I rank this above Alexis murdering the Beersons? Because Alexis murdering the Beersons is something I planned. Roy D. Dillon dying was not something I planned. That happened completely on its own. And I was fully surprised and fully shocked just like you guys were. I didn't even know a sim could die from a heart attack. I had no clue. But the fact is that he got so pissed off that Chris stole his woman, that Alexis was leaving him, that he died over her. As he should. Is that too much to ask for in a man? And it's even funnier too because just a few episodes before, Alexis and Chris hated each other. And just one episode before that episode is when they started banging each other. I mean, imagine being Roy. Imagine being in that situation. You thought you finally found the one. The girl. You just cuffed her. You guys just had a nice romantic dinner to find out, boom, she cheated on you with her enemy. Boom, she got pregnant with him. And boom, she's pregnant with twins. I would die too. I don't know how I would be able to handle that embarrassment. So yeah, rip Roy D. Dillon. He did not deserve that. But at the same time, I never wanted him to begin with. <laughs> but that concludes what, in my opinion, is the top 10 craziest things to ever happen in my legacy series. And you know what's funny? I can already think of three things that are going to happen in the future of the legacy challenge that could end up on this list. So if you think we're gonna have a single moment of peace in generation two, three, and so on, think again. It's going to get gradually worse. And I did promise you guys something. I did, I did, I did. I did promise you guys that if you did make it to the end of this video, I will show you the bottom level of Autumn's and Shanna's house, which I am now going to do. So if you do not wanna see this, if you want to wait until Autumn and Shanna actually move into this house to see it, then I'd recommend clicking off this video right now because I have a tour to give you guys. All right, here we are at the front door of Autumn's and Shanna's, or how I like to call them, Shantum's new house. And I'm not going to give away the world just yet that they're going to be living in. You are free to guess. But this is the front door to their house. There's some cute little sitting areas to the left, and there's the living room to the right. So let's go ahead and make our way inside. So this is the entrance from the front door into the main living space of the house. And if you're wondering what that purple stuff is on the wall, stay innocent. I just want to point out that I did not build this house at all. If you know anything about me, I'm not a builder. I do not have the patience for it. I got this from the gallery, but I did heavily decorate this house and gave it a little, you know, shantum twist on it. So some things are from the original build, some aren't. Pretty much all of this space in the hallway I left from the original build. It's cute, it's not too cluttered, but it makes it look like people live here, you know? This is a cute little portrait of Autumn and Shanna from a video that is coming out on my channel next week. From the walkway, you enter the main living space. Over here, we have the little living area. Ignore that, that's a wall full of pictures. We have one of those hanging chairs chairs below the stairs, some cute artwork, and I absolutely adore the view from the sitting area. We have a little piano and a fireplace and a portrait of Autumn and Shanna from their wedding day. So cute. Past the piano and the living space is the dining area and the kitchen as well as a family gym. I don't know how I feel about those fish on the wall. I don't feel like that's very Autumn nor Shanna. Definitely not Shanna, but for now I'm just gonna leave it. I think this table is so Autumn, it's not even funny. Little baby chair. Lots of stuff that has to do with gardening since we know our girl Autumn loves to garden. And I spent hours, I mean hours, decorating this kitchen, which is insane. And yes, that's another, um, it's just artwork, you know? It's just, it's just artwork. So much custom content, it's not even funny. This is a plant milk press by Ice Mun Mun, which I absolutely love. I could totally see Autumn making her own oat milk or soy milk or something like that. We have a little sandwich stand. I feel like Autumn and Shanna would be the type to throw like little tea parties and have finger foods. This trash can override is amazing. I will leave the creator on the screen because I totally forgot who it is, but it's basically a recoloring of that robot alien trash can, the one that's super ugly and blue and white and all that. And this one, they just have solid aesthetic colors. I love it. Through this door is a family gym. Lots of cute workout equipment and all of this is fully functional by the way. The mods are the Let's Get Fit mod by Sepsid and the CrossFit mod by SYB. One thing I feel like The Sims severely lacks is workout equipment, so this mod is a complete lifesaver. And then coming back from the kitchen in the living area, if you go into this little nook, we have two rooms as well as a bathroom. The bathroom is really nothing special. It's just your typical bathroom. And then these two are bedrooms, but I actually redid this one into the more like an office space. And this one is actually Autumn and Shanna's bedroom, but I'm not going to show this one yet because it's not done and it's embarrassing how ugly and disgusting and weird it looks. So I'm not even going to show it. It'll be worth it though. When you do see it, it'll be nice then. But now 
hell no. And the room next to Autumn and Shanna's bedroom is a little office area. Bookshelf, a chess table, a dollhouse, this little desk set up with a typewriter and some pictures of Autumn and Shanna, so cute. That's definitely one thing I wanna do more of once they are fully moved into this house is I wanna add and incorporate a lot of family pictures. That's something I definitely have not done in the Volkov house enough and it's just because I really hate taking pictures of my Sims and decorating. I'm not the biggest decorator. Like this house took me a good two months to fully decorate, but I'm going to try to do it more often because these pictures are so cute. And then behind this is a little staircase which I know looks a little weird because it's a spiral staircase uh, that leads to somewhere. And I don't have to show you that because it's technically not on the first level. So I guess we'll just have to wait to find out what that is. That concludes the tour of the downstairs level of Autumn and Shanna's house. And that concludes this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all your support and love as always. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. And like I said earlier, don't forget to comment what you feel like the most chaotic moment in the Legacy series is and what your favorite moment is. The next episode will be out on the date written on the screen. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.